I'm going to start with the monster at the end of this book. I'm going to try and read it upside down and I'll hold these pages nice and close so you can see them. So there's Grover and he says, this is a very dull page. Oh, what's on the next page? Let's see what's on the next page. What did that say? On the first page. What did that say? Did that say there will be a monster at the end of this book? Oh, it did. Oh, I'm so scared of monsters. Shh, listen, I have an idea. If you do not turn any pages, we'll never get to the end of this book. And that is good because there is a monster at the end of this book. So please do not turn the page. You turned the page! Oh, poor Grover. Maybe you do not understand. You see, turning pages will bring us to the end of this book, and there is a monster at the end of this book. But this, this will stop you from turning pages. See, I am tying the pages together. So you cannot... You turned another page! Oh, you do not understand what you are doing to me. Now, stop turning pages. Let's turn another one. There, I, Grover, am nailing this page to the next one so you will not be able to turn it and we will not get any closer to the monster at the end of this book. Look, he's building a big wall, trying to nail this page to the next one. Oh, let's try really hard, try it. There we got it. All right, all right, all right, all right, says Grover. Do you know that every time you turn another page, you not only get us closer to the monster at the end of this book, you make a terrible mess. This will stop you from turning pages. A heavy, thick, solid, strong brick wall. I would just like to see you try to turn this page. Let's try and see if we can do it. Do you know you are very strong, says Grover, underneath the big pile of bricks. The next page is the end of this book, and there is a monster at the end of this book. Oh, I am so scared. Please do not turn the page. Please, please, please. I think we should turn it anyway. Oh, well, would you look at that? This is the end of the book. And the only one here is me. I, lovable, furry old Grover, am the monster at the end of this book. And you were so scared. I told you and told you there was nothing to be afraid of. Oh, I am so embarrassed. <laughs> That's always my favorite part of the book is how embarrassed he is at the end of the book. Uh, it looks like we've got a couple of minutes uh, here. So unless Alexis jumps in and tells me, no, I can't, I'm going to read Chicka, Chicka, Boom, Boom. There's all the letters of the alphabet. Chicka, Chicka, Boom, Boom. There's a lot of pages before this story gets started. A told B and B told C, I'll meet you at the top of the coconut tree. We said D to EFG. I'll beat you to the top of the coconut tree. Chicka, chicka, boom, boom. Will there be enough room? Here comes H up the coconut tree. And I and J and tag along K. All on their way up the coconut tree. Chicka, chicka, boom, boom. Will there be enough room? Look who's coming. L-M-N-O-P and Q-R-S and T-U-V. Still more, W and X-Y-Z. The whole alphabet up the, oh no. Chicka, chicka, boom, boom. All the letters fell out. Skit, scat, scoodle, doop, flip, flop, flee. Everybody run into the coconut tree. 
mamas and papas and uncles and aunts. Hug their little dears and dust off their pants. Help us up, cried ABC. Next from the pileup, skinned knee D and stub toed E and patched up F. Then comes G, all out of breath. H is tangled up with I. J and K are about to cry. L is knotted up like a tie. M is looped, N is stooped. O is twisted, alley-ooped. Skit, scat, scoodle doo flip, flop, flee. Look who's coming. It's Black Eyed P, Q, R, S, and Loose Tooth T. Then U, V, W, wiggle, jiggle, free. Last to come are X, Y, Z, and the sun goes down on the coconut tree. But, chicka, chicka, boom, boom. Look, there's a full moon. A is out of bed, and this is what he said. Dare, double dare. You can't catch me. I'll beat you to the top of the coconut tree. Chicka, chicka, boom, boom. The end. Hopefully you guys enjoyed those books. Um, they're two of my kids' favorite books, as I said. So it was nice to have the opportunity to, uh, to read them once again. So thanks to, uh, again to Alexis, uh, who's going to do a great job here with the emceeing the remainder of the uh, conference. I know you got some, some yoga coming up in a little bit as well and, uh, and some rhyming. So uh, from CTV, my name's Josh Clausen. Thanks so much for having me uh, read some books with you this afternoon. Alexis? Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I love those books. Um, how did everyone uh, like those books? Uh, just feel free to put your reaction below. All right. Well, next up, we have Yoga by Glow Yoga Kids. And this is actually their second year of joining us at the carnival. Um, and they actually recommended that before we get started um, to grab your very own yoga buddy, aka your favorite stuffed animal. So everyone go grab your stuffed animal. Awesome. And let's give them a big welcome with the clap reaction and let's get started. Hi, I see people scrambling to grab their buddies. Hello, everyone. Oh my goodness, look at all of those amazing stuffed animals. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be so much fun. Awesome, oh great. It looks like everybody's ready to go. Today we're gonna read a super Super fantastic book because guess what? I wrote it. I wrote it this year. So I'm so excited to share with you guys. It's called A Yoga Adventure Through Space. And we're going to go on a little yoga adventure through space together. Are you guys ready? Give me like a thumbs up. Awesome. Okay. We're going to do some of the book. I don't know if we'll have time to do all of it because we're going to do all the yoga poses in between. But we're going to start with our very first. Hold it up a little bit closer. It says, let's go to outer space. First, we need our space gear. So we're gonna put our stuffies to the side for now. We're gonna back up to our yoga mat all the way up. Nice work. We're gonna start by putting on our yoga helmets for outer space. So we're gonna reach up to the sky, reach your hands as high as you can go. Awesome, and pop it on your head, go whoop. Make sure it's really tight. Turn your height side to side. Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> nice. All right. Now we have to put on our space suit. So I want you to lift up one foot really high to the sky and slide on your space suit. Go whoop. And then the other side go whoop. Nice. Reach your arms out wide. Reach your hands. Good job, my friends. One over to the other side. Slide it all the way over. And then over here. And slide it all the way over. 
Nice job. Bring your legs back in. We got to zip up our spacesuit. So reach your hands all the way down to your toes and zip it up to your nose. Go zip. Nice. Let's try one more time. Reach down and go zip. Whoa. What else do we need? We probably need some space boots, don't you think? Yeah? Okay. We're going to sit on our bums for this one because they're pretty tricky. So come all the way down. Nice work. We're going to lift up one foot really high. See if you can lift it up and put on your space boot. Grab it with your hands. Oh, oh my goodness. How about our other foot? Lift up your other foot really high and slide it on. Oh. Nice work. Now, in order to put on our space gloves, we have to clap our hands 10 times in a row. Can you count with me? Let's try it. Go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good job, my friends. You can come sit back, crisscross applesauce. We're going to check out another page of the book. Let's see what we've got. Oh, my goodness. First stop the moon get in your spaceship are you guys ready to get in our spaceship and blast off we're gonna start out really low in like a little froggy pose like we're sitting in our spaceship getting ready to go all right we're gonna count down from five i'm gonna put on my little space scooter i'm gonna say five four three two one blast off good job nice work let's try it again get really low Go all the way to the moon one more time, buddy. Four, four, three, two, one. Blast off! Good work. Nice. We're going to stretch up really high now. Reach your hands to the sky. Good work. Hang down low and tickle, tickle the twinkle your toes. Good job. Bend your knees. Put your hands on the ground. Feet jump back into your spaceship. Good job, friends. Belly on the ground. Ride your spaceship around. Go boom. Nice work. Look up at the moon. Nice work. Now back at the earth. Stick your butt really high in the air. Good job. Feet jump up. Whoop. Out of your spaceship. Super job, hang down low, sweep the moon dust away from your toes. Awesome, stretch all the way up high. Wave hello to the stars. Nice work, now make a moon shape with your body, lean over to the side. Nice, how about the other side? Good work, my friends. Let's come and sit back down onto our bums and see what our next page is. What do we have next? Oh my goodness, you guys. We have been magically transported to our first planet, Mercury. Mercury is the smallest planet and it's made of rocks. So we're gonna be a tiny little baby rock together. We're gonna come back to our yoga mats. We're gonna sit onto our knees. So our feet are underneath our bum. You got it. You're going to put one hand and the other hand in front of you onto the floor. Good job. Now, this is how you make yourself really small. You got to bring your nose down to your hands and hide your head low. Nice work. Now, sometimes little baby planets like to cry just like real babies do. So lift up your head and go, <laughs> Nice work. Hide your head low like a small little planet. Let's try it one more time. Lift up your head and go. <laughs> you guys are great little baby planets. All right, you can come back up crisscross. Let's see our next page. Ooh. Our next planet on our space adventure is Venus. Oh, it's a big yellow planet. Venus is the hottest planet as it's shaped by volcanoes. Ooh, we're gonna be a volcano together. Now volcanoes start out really calm and then the lava starts to build and build and build and then they explode. So we're gonna try it together. Come back to your yoga mat. Bring your hands in front of your heart. 
making your lava start to build really calm, really quiet. Reach your fingers a little bit higher. Once they reach the very top, then it's a Nice work. Let's try it again. Bring your hands in very slowly. Watch your lava build. Gotta be as quiet as you can. And then explore. <laughs> nice work, little Venus planet. All right, let's check out our next page. The volcano fired us off to our next planet, Mars. NASA has said that there is real possibility of life forms on Mars. And this little alien guy says, do you believe in aliens? Oh my goodness, I believe in aliens big time. Let's see if we can make an alien pose with our bodies. We're gonna come to our bum, all the way down. We're gonna bring our knees bent in front of us and our hands are gonna come behind us. Nice work. Now here's the extra tricky part, okay? You have to push into your hands and your feet and lift your bum off the ground so that you can walk around like a silly alien. And you can even make an alien sound. <laughs> nice. All right, crawl your alien bodies back to your yoga spot. And guess what? We crawl the alien bodies all the way to Jupiter. Their red dots on Jupiter is a giant storm. Now we're gonna make a giant storm with our bodies. We're gonna see if we can make the sound of the storm. So we're gonna start, we're gonna either snap our fingers or click your tongue, whichever one you like, okay? Let's start with that. This is our little raindrops that we're here. Little click, 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 clack. And then the rain starts to get a little bit louder. You can start to rub your hands together. It gets a little bit louder. Nice, and then it gets a little bit louder. See if you can clap your hands, making the rain nice and loud. And then it gets even louder. Start to pat your legs. Pat them really hard. Nice, and then you can stand up. We're gonna make it really loud by stomping our feet. Really nice and loud. And you can even make the thunder sound go boom. <laughs> nice, now when you want the rain to stop, you just gotta come back the other way. Start to pat your legs. Nice, and start to clap. And start to rub your hands. And then lastly, we're gonna click our tongues or snap our fingers until the rain stops. Good work. <laughs> All right, let's check out our next page. Oh, Jupiter is covered in clouds as well. And the cloud floated us off to our next planet on our next adventure, Saturn. And Saturn has thousands rings. This is where we need our yoga buddy. Do you guys have your stuffed animal with you or your friend or your parent or your sibling with you? Perfect. Okay. Now here's how it goes. We need one person to stand in the middle and the other person is going to stand on the side. You're going to grab hands with them so that the person is in between you guys. They're going to stand right in the middle, third person, and you guys hold their hands. Perfect. Now we're going to be the rings of Saturn. We're going to spin around our friend all the way around. <laughs> and then maybe the other way too. Don't forget to spin the other way. Spin, 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 spin. <laughs> nice job. Oh my goodness. Who is dizzy? I am. <laughs> nice job, friends. Let's check out our next page. Oh my goodness. The gases from Saturn blew us to our next planet, Uranus. And it is the coldest planet on our outer space adventure. But guess what? It has diamond storms. So we're gonna try and do that all together. We're gonna get really chilly because it's so cold on this planet. We're gonna sit on our bums. We're gonna grab a hold of our knees really tight. Like we're so cold. Warm up your body, warm, warm, warm. Oh my goodness, okay. Now we're gonna test out the temperature together. We gotta very slowly open up your arms and your legs. Whoa, but it's still so cold, so come back in and warm up your body, it's too cold out here. Oh my goodness. Let's try it one more time, okay? So very slowly, open up your arms and your legs. Test 
would rain from the sky. I think I would like tacos. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> All right, let's check out our next page. The magnetic pull from Neptune spreads us toward it. And there's supersonic winds on Neptune. So we're gonna make the sound of the wind with our bellies, okay? We're gonna put two hands onto our belly. One on top of the other. We're gonna take a really big smell through our nose and fill our belly like a big, big balloon. And when we breathe out, we're gonna make the sound of the wind. We're gonna go whoosh. Are you guys ready to try? Yeah, okay, take a big smell. And then go whoosh. Nice, let's try one more time. Big, big smell. Whoosh. You guys are super good at that one. Oh my goodness. We're coming close to the end of our yoga adventure. It's almost coming to an end and we have to head back home to earth. But before we take a rest, we should play a game. And we're gonna use this awesome picture to help us. We're gonna pretend we're all the things in the picture. And I want you to show me how you think those things move, okay? The first one is a tree. How does a tree look? Can you show me with your body? Mm, oh, yes, totally. It has big branches. Maybe it has a big branch on the side. You can look however you want, or a round tree. Totally great trees, you guys. All right, let's try another one. Can you show me how you think a frog looks? What does a frog do? Ribbit, 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 <laughs> ribbit. Oh my goodness, look at all these jumping frogs. <laughs> Let's try another one. Can you show me how a mountain looks? What does a mountain look like? Oh, it's really pointy. I'm gonna make my mountain with my body like this. Whoa, big, big mountains. Nice job, you guys. Hmm. Can you show me how the sunshine looks? What does the sunshine look like? Whoa, it's big, it's in the sky, it's nice and round and it's warm. And sometimes it moves, doesn't it? From one side to the other. All right, let's try two more. Let's see, can you show me what a puppy dog looks like? <laughs> we have so many cool things on earth, don't we? Let's try one last one. Can you show me how a fishy looks? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Fish can hold their breath for a long time. I can't hold my breath that long underwater. All right, let's check out our next page. It is so important after an outer space adventure to get some rest. So we're going to imagine that we have some beautiful stars on our hands, okay? So you can sit crisscross applesauce, open up your hands, and put them onto your knees. Good work. Now I want you to imagine you have a star in this hand and you have a star in this hand too. Okay, and we're gonna watch each star float to the sky, but you can't take your eyes off your star, otherwise it might disappear. So let's see if we can watch it. Watch your star, move your hand up even higher and watch your star the whole time. And then watch it float all the way back down to your knee. Good job. Let's try it on the other side. Look at your other star and watch it float up all the way to the sky. Keep your eyes on it. Don't let it go away. And then watch it float all the way back down. Good work, you guys. You can relax your hands because we're almost to the end of our yoga adventure. Look at our So my friends, this is the hardest part of yoga, but I think you guys have already done such an amazing job 
that I think you're gonna be able to do it. So we're gonna lay all the way down onto our backs. Lay all the way down, make yourself really cozy like you're that little astronaut laying in your bed. Nice job, pretend that you're sleeping, you can close your eyes. And I want you to imagine everything that I'm saying in your mind, okay? So you gotta imagine it in your brain without looking at any pictures. I think you guys can do that. We're gonna imagine that we're lying beneath the night sky. We feel so relaxed and so cozy. You pull your blanket up close. You cuddle your stuffy. The moon shines brightly above you. The stars twinkle as if to say hello. You feel so calm and so comfy gazing up at them when suddenly a shooting star dashes across the sky. You must be so lucky to have seen one. So go ahead and make a wish. Imagine how you feel as your biggest wish comes true. Knowing that deep down in your heart, your wish will come true in real life too. The shooting star falls out of the sky and lands on your nose, turning your body into a star as well. So still laying on your back, spread your arms and your legs really wide like a star. Nice. Take a big smell through your nose, filling your body with starlight, and then breathe out. <sighs> Twinkle your starlight for everyone to see. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. You are just as lucky. You are just as luminous. You are just as lovely as all the stars in the sky. Take one more big smell, my friends. Breathe out through your mouth. And then on the count of three, we're gonna come sit back up on our bums. Ready? One, two, three. Pop your body back up so you're sitting crisscross applesauce. Good work, my friends. Nice. Now we have a couple of pages in this book where it explains a lot of our outer space stuff that we learned today. And it shares some of the yoga poses, but we're gonna skip past that for now, okay? I'm going to show you our very last page. It says, as the sun rises in the sky, we begin a new adventure. Will you come along? Will you guys come for the next adventure? Give me a thumbs up. Nice. Nice job, you guys. I'm working on it right now. So hopefully it'll be ready for you guys next time. Okay, for all of my parent friends, if you're looking for a copy, you can find it on our website, glowyogakids.com or on Amazon as well. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Lots of love, my friends. Mwah, 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 mwah. <laughs> all right, well, thank you so much for that. It was so much fun. Um, so did everyone else enjoy the yoga session? Uh, just put your reaction down below. All right. Um, so before we go ahead um, with our rhymes at bind session, um, there should be a survey, in, a survey link in your chat um, bar there. So feel free to fill out that survey. Um, we'll also paste it again after the next session. Okay. Um, so as I said before, um, it's time to finish things up for this session and it's time to do some singing. So join Janine from the Center for Family Literacy for a Rhyme Stat Bind session. Welcome Janine and... Thank you, Alexis. Uh, welcome everybody. It's so great to have you all here with us today. It's wonderful to see some familiar faces and to see some new faces too. So let's get started with a hello song. It goes like this. My hands wave hello, my hands wave hello. Every time I see my friends, my hands wave hello. My face gives a smile, my face gives a smile. 
Every time I see my friends, my face gives a smile. My fingers blow a kiss. My fingers blow a kiss. Every time I see my friends, my fingers blow a kiss. Oh, welcome to all of you. I'm glad you're here. I think we need to do a tickle song next. So get ready for some tickles. Now, maybe your grown up is going to tickle you, or maybe you're going to tickle your grown up, or you could tickle your stuffy. I've got my tickle bear here with me. Tickle bear is going to get some tickles, but first I need my crocodile. Can you make a crocodile with your hand? Snap, snap. Okay, here he goes. Here is the crocodile. He'll give you smiles for free. But if you get too close to him, he'll gobble up your knee. Give those knees some tickles. Here is the crocodile. He has a bumpy nose. But if you get too close to him, he'll gobble up your toes. Oh, are your toes getting some tickles? There you go. Here is the crocodile. He's really, really smelly. P.U. But if you get too close to him, he'll gobble up your belly. Tickle, 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 tickle. Oh, that's great. Well, we all enjoyed some tickles, didn't we? Hey, I noticed in Glow Yoga that we went and visited a bunch of different planets. We're going to pretend that we're going to some different planets too. Why don't we try bumping up and down in my little space shuttle? Yeah, let's do that one. All right, this is a bumpy song. So if you're a big kid, you can do the bumping all by yourself, right? And if you're a little one, maybe your grown up will help you do the bumping. Here we go. Bumping up and down in my little space shuttle. Bumping up and down in my little space shuttle. Bumping up and down in my little space shuttle. Won't you go to the moon with me? My space suit's on and my boots are too. My space suit's on and my boots are too. My space suit's on and my boots are too. Won't you go to the moon with me? We step on the moon and we bounce up and down. We step on the moon and we bounce up and down. We step on the moon and we bounce up and down. Won't you go to the moon with me? Bumping up and down in my little space shuttle. Bumping up and down in my little space shuttle. Bumping up and down in my little space shuttle. Won't you go to the moon with me? Oh, I saw lots of bouncing in that song. I think some of you have some sillies in there. Let's do a song to shake out our sillies. I'm gonna shake, shake, shake my sillies out. Shake, shake, shake my sillies out. Shake, shake, shake my sillies out. Wiggle my waggles away. I'm gonna clap, clap, clap my crazies out. Clap, clap. Clap my crazies out, clap, clap, clap my crazies out, wiggle my waggles away. I gotta jump, jump, jump my jiggles out, jump, jump, jump my jiggles out, jump, jump, jump my jiggles out, wiggle my waggles away. Oh, did that make you tired? Oh, let's pretend that we're tired. Can you do some big yawns? I'm gonna yawn, oh, yawn. Yawn my sleepies out, yawn, yawn, oh, yawn my sleepies out, yawn, yawn, yawn my sleepies out, wiggle my waggles away. Did you have a little rest? I'm gonna shake, shake, shake my sillies out, shake, shake, shake my sillies out, shake, shake, shake my sillies out, wiggle my waggles away. Oh, good job. We got rid of some of those wiggles. All right. Another thing we usually do at Rhymes That Bind is we usually do a snack song. And snack songs are great for, for that transition in while we're waiting for a snack to come. Sometimes our little ones need a little distraction. So a song like this might work really well. We're going to start with the apples and the apple tree. 
way up high in the apple tree. Two little apples smiled at me. I shook that tree as hard as I could. <gasps> Down came the apples. Mmm, they were good. Yes, we know that apples grow in an apple tree, but let's use our imagination and we'll pretend that cookies grow in a cookie tree. Would you like to see a cookie tree? Oh, I sure would. Okay, now right up high. Way up high in the cookie tree, I saw two cookies smiling at me. I shook that tree as hard as I could. Down came the cookies. Mmm, they were good. Oh, yum, 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 yum. We enjoyed those cookies, didn't we, friends? Okay, well, we also like to do a numeracy song. It's good to do numeracy songs. They have a predictable pattern and introduce our little ones to counting. And when we make them fun, they're gonna learn even more. This one you might recognize as being similar to five little monkeys jumping on the bed. We changed it to five little snowmen riding on a sled to make it seasonal. Now we start with our five. Give me five, everybody. All the fingers on one hand. That's five. That's right. Okay, here we go. Five little snowmen riding on a sled. One fell off and bumped his head. Frosty called the doctor and the doctor said, no more snowman riding on that sled. Okay, we had five, but we lost one. How many are left? Four, that's right. Four little snowmen riding on a sled. One fell off and bumped her head. Frosty called the doctor and the doctor said, no more snowmen riding on that sled. Okay, we had four, but we lost another one. Four take away one leaves us with three, you got it. Three little snowmen riding on a sled. One fell off and bumped his head. Frosty called the doctor and the doctor said, no more snowman riding on that sled. Did you notice that the doctor is getting louder and louder? I think the doctor is getting very frustrated. Can you show me your frustrated face? <clears throat> yeah, that doctor is frustrated. Well, we had three, but we asked another one. Three take away one leaves us with two snowmen. Two little snowmen riding on a sled. One fell off and bumped her head. Frosty called the doctor and the doctor said, no more snowmen riding on that sled. Oh, poor doctor. The snowmen are not listening. We had two, but we lost one. Now there's only one snowman. This is our last verse. So at the end, can you shout really loud when you're being the doctor? As loud as you can, okay? One little snowman riding on a sled. One fell off and bumped his head. Frosty called the doctor and the doctor said, no more snowman riding on that sled. Oh dear, did you shout as loud as you could? Oh, that poor doctor, he was so frustrated. Well, since it's winter time, let's do another winter kind of song. And this is another number song, but we're gonna talk about the snowflakes. And this time we're gonna use all 10 of our fingers, all 10. Okay, that's both hands. Show me all 10. Can you wiggle them? Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Okay, here we go. One little, two little, three little snowflakes. Four little, five little, six little snowflakes. Seven little, eight little, nine little snowflakes. Ten little snowflakes on my hat. Oh, a hat is something we wear when there's snowflakes coming down. Mm, let's sing it again, but we'll sing about a different, something else we wear when it's snowing. One little, two little, three little snowflakes. Four little, five little, six little snowflakes. Seven little, eight little, nine little snowflakes. Ten little snowflakes on my mittens. Oh, this time we caught them on our hands, didn't we? Let's do it one more time. 
One little, two little, three little snowflakes. Four little, five little, six little snowflakes. Seven little, eight little, nine little snowflakes. Ten little snowflakes on my boots. Can you point to your feet or touch your feet on your boots? That's another thing we wear when the snowflakes are coming down. All right, friends. Well, I think we're going to do a cuddle time kind of song. Now, sometimes we think about doing these slow songs um, at bedtime and they make great lullabies, but we can sing them anytime our little one needs a cuddle. So we're gonna call it a cuddle song. And I love this cuddle song because we're gonna do it in three different languages. So we're gonna do it and we're gonna start in Spanish. I know I have some Spanish speakers in our group today, I recognize you. And we're gonna do it in French as well. And then we're gonna finish up in English. All right, now can you get, maybe you could cuddle your little one or if you have, if you have your stuffy close by, you could cuddle your stuffy. Yes, all right, here we go. Yo te amo, yo te amo. All day long I sing this little song to you. Yo te amo, yo te amo. Darling, I love you. Je t'aime, je t'aime. All day long I sing this little song to you. Je t'aime, je t'aime. Darling, I love you. Now we did it in Spanish and we did it in French. We're gonna sing it in English now, but I wanted to just let you know, instead of saying darling in this song, you could use your little one's name. So I'm gonna put Tickleberry's name into my song, but you can put your little one's name in, all right? I love you, I love you. All day long I sing this little song to you. I love you, I love you. Tickle Bear, I love you. That's right, put your little one's name into the song. Now, you could put that song into any language you would like to. If there's a language that you use in your home, or a language you'd like to introduce your child to, put that into the song. It's just, I love you in lots of different languages. All right, another one that probably lots of you are familiar with is you are my sunshine. Let's do that one. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. Yes, and you'll notice in most of our rhymes, we try to do them at least two times because repetition is what helps us learn. All right, friends, we're almost to the end of our rhymes that bind time. So we're gonna do our see you later alligator goodbye song. I know lots of my friends know this one. This is a popular one. You have to help me act it out though, okay? Get your, get your alligator ready. Yeah, it's like clapping your hands sideways. There's our alligator. See you later, alligator, in a wild crocodile. Give a hug, ladybug, blow a kiss, Mwah! jellyfish. See you soon, big baboon, there's the door, dinosaur. Take care, Brrr, polar bear, bye bye, butterfly. Oh, goodbye, my little butterflies. Thank you for joining us for Rhymes That Bind. I hope you enjoy the rest of the carnival. Bye for now. Hope to see you soon. Mwah! All right. Well, thank you so much, Janine. Uh, how did everyone enjoy that? Uh, give your reaction below. All right. Awesome. Um, 
So again, if you open the chat and have a chance to fill out the survey, that would be great. Uh, just seeing as this is our first line uh, online carnival, we want to get as much feedback as we can so we can make it even better um, for next year if you know we have to do it online. And finally, to finish off the event, uh, we're going to do uh, the book draw with the books donated by the Center for Family Literacy. Um, so congratulations to Rosanna Yan. Um, you are the lucky winner. So the Center for Family Literacy will be in contact with you after the event, just to confirm um, some details. Um, yes. Um, so thank you everyone for joining us today. We hope you keep singing, reading, and having fun together. Um, so if you're signed up for the next session, you can stay on. Otherwise, um, you can leave the meeting by just clicking the little red button leave below. Um, and otherwise, have a great weekend, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you, Alexis. Um, and thank you, everybody. As Alexa says, um, we're done a little bit early. So if you are staying on for the next session, you can go take a little break. Um, just turn off your camera and uh, do what you want to do and then come back at three o'clock and we will start the next session. Uh, thank you very much, Alexis, the Golden Key Society and everybody else for helping us out today. And maybe what I'll do too is um, I'll read out some of the comments for our, our presenters who may still be here. Um, we are getting lots of people direct messaging us that say, thank you so much for a fun time. Um, thank you, this was great. They had lots of fun. Janine is awesome is on there somewhere. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks for the feedback everybody. And if you click on that link directly to the survey, it'll open up in a new browser so you can actually do it right away. Otherwise, um, we will be sending out an email later today to, to follow up with that as well. Um, lots of love for the yoga too. Great, great job for with the glow kids. Thanks everybody, thanks for coming. I think we are going to get started again. Um, so I know some of you have stayed with us from the first session, but there are some new people joining us at three o'clock. So I'm just going to run through everything again. And again, I want to um, uh, welcome everyone and thank you for joining us at our Family Literacy Day Carnival session two. Um, my name is Kim Chung and I'm the co executive director with the Center for Family Literacy. And again, if we could just take a moment to acknowledge wherever you are standing, the land you're standing on right now. And here in Edmonton, we are on Treaty 6 territory, the traditional lands of many Indigenous peoples, including uh, the whole and the homeland of the Métis. We recognize that the spiritual and practical relationships of the Indigenous people to the land has created a rich heritage of learning and life that influences our community every day. And we're going to have some more fun with learning today. Um, so thank you for those who are with us still for participating and welcome uh, to help us celebrate National Family Literacy Day. Um, if you heard me in the first time, we just want to uh, acknowledge that literacy does start to develop at birth in parents and caregivers who are their first and most important teacher. And family literacy is about all the things families do in their in their day to support literacy through daily routines like singing, playing, reading, cooking, even chores and bath time, we can do literacy. It's about your family having fun with learning. And we are excited to share some more activities with you today. 
Um, if you're just joining us, and just as a reminder, this is a public event, so we are recording it. If you do not wish to be recorded, you just have to turn off your camera. And the icon for that is a camera shape at the bottom of your screen. You can just press it to turn it off or on. You're more than welcome to leave your camera on if you want. Um, everyone except our guests are muted for the entire event. And uh, if you want to get involved, you can just press the reaction symbol. So there's a hearts, there's clapping, you can do whatever you'd like there below. If you accidentally leave and you didn't mean to, or you're having some technical issues and you leave to see if it'll be better, you just have to click the same link to come back in. We'll let you back in. Um, if you are having technical issues, you can message any of the hosts or co-hosts and we will try to help you through that. Um, we also have the closed captioning option um, at the bottom of the screen. You can turn that on. And if you'd like to see the other families and uh, people that are with us today, I will be spotlighting so the speaker will be in your screen, but you can always change that back to where you can see everybody. At the top right hand corner, there's a square that says view. You can change it on your screen. Now, we are excited again to partner this year with McEwen University Golden Key International Honor Society to put on this event. Very different event than we're used to, but it's I think uh, we're having fun online this year. Um, and this time we have Shay Collins from the McEwen Golden Key chapter, who's the members chair, and she will be our MC for the second, se second session. <laughs> Thank you, Shay, for joining us and I'll pass it over to you. Thanks, Kim. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our 2021 Online Family Literacy Carnival. My name is Shay, and I'm the members chair for the McEwen Golden Key chapter. So for those of you who don't know, the Golden Key International Honor Society is a worldwide group that recognizes students in the top 15% of their program on their academic achievements. Student members strive to work towards upholding the three pillars of Golden Key, which are academics, leadership, and service. The Family Literacy Carnival has been an annual service event for the chapter, and we are so happy to be able to co-host it with the Center for Family Literacy. And so our schedule for this session is going to be starting off with Tara from the Center for Family Literacy, who will be reading a story to all of us. And then at 3.20, uh, Little Lotus will lead us through a yoga session. And then finally, we'll end the day off with an oral storytelling by Marilyn Lizzie from the Métis Nation of Alberta. And so with that being said, please join me in welcoming Tara, who is a facilitator from the Center for Family Literacy. Hi, friends. I'm so excited to see so many faces here today. So many that you don't all fit in my screen, but that's okay. So I'm going to be sharing a story with you today, and I'm sure you all know the classic story of the three little pigs, right? Where three pigs find out whose house is strongest when a big bad wolf comes to stir things up, right? And there's lots of versions of that story, and, but they all kind of end the same with the three little pigs safe in the brick house and the big bad wolf, well, looking like the bad guy, right? Well. Have you ever heard the story, the, the saying that there are two sides to every story? Well, today we're gonna hear the wolf's side of the story. Yeah, told by the wolf himself. So our story is called The True Story of the Three Little Pigs by a wolf, this one, as told to John Siesca, illustrated by Lane Smith. Okay. So before we turn it over to the wolf, I want you to listen closely to his story and see if you maybe feel differently about him at the end of the story, okay? All right, without further ado, Mr. Wolf, you're on. Here we go. Let's get this open for him. Everybody knows the story of the three little pigs, or at least they think they do. But I'll let you in on a little secret. Nobody knows the real story because nobody has ever heard my side of the story. Oh, let's hear his side of the story. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. I'm the wolf, Alexander T. Wolf. You can call me Al. I don't know how this whole big bad wolf thing got started, 
but it's all wrong. Oh. Yeah. He doesn't look so bad, does he? No, he looks pretty nice. Maybe it's because of our diet. Hey, it's not my fault wolves eat cute little animals like bunnies and sheep and pigs. That's just the way we are. If cheeseburgers were cute, folks would probably think you were big and bad too. Uh, friends, I love cheeseburgers, but I don't think I'd eat this one. It looks a little bit suspicious. But like I was saying, the whole big bad wolf thing is all wrong. The real story is about a sneeze and a cup of sugar. This is the real story. A sneeze and a cup of sugar? Hmm, let's see. Let's see what he says about that. Way back in once upon a time, time, I was making a birthday cake for my dear old granny. I had a terrible sneezing cold and I ran out of sugar. There he is making the cake. And friends, I've made lots of cakes, but I've never had anything like this in my cake before. So I walked down the street to ask my neighbor for a cup of sugar. Now this neighbor was a pig and he wasn't too bright either. He had built his whole house out of straw. Can you believe it? I mean, who in his right mind would build a house out of straw? The wolf makes a really good point. There's the straw house. That doesn't look like it would stand up very well in a strong wind, does it? No. So of course, the minute I knock on the door, it fell right in. I didn't want to just walk into someone else's house. So I called, hey, little pig, little pig, are you in? No answer. I was just about to go home without the cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. That's when my nose started to itch and I felt a sneeze coming on. Well, I huffed and I puffed. Uh-oh, friends, what do you think is gonna happen? And I sneezed a great sneeze. Ah, dude! Uh oh. And he didn't even cover his nose. And you know what? The whole darn straw house fell down. And right in the middle of the pile of the straw was the first little pig. Well, there he is. There's the pig. It seemed like a shame to leave a perfectly good ham dinner laying there in the straw. So I ate it up. Think of it as a big cheeseburger just lying there. Well, he makes a good point, friends, right? Our, our moms and dads always tell us not to waste food, right? So he was just doing what he was told. I was feeling a little better, but I still didn't have my cup of sugar. So I went to the next neighbor's house. This neighbor was the first little pig's brother. He was a little smarter, but not much. He had built his house out of sticks. Oh, there's the stick house. And yeah, it might be stronger than the straw, but I don't know if it could stand up to a strong wind or a strong sneeze, do you? I rang the bell on the stick house. Nobody answered. I called, hey, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? He yelled back, go away, Wolf. You can't come in. I'm sh shaving the hairs of my chinny chin chin. Oh my goodness. How rude of him. When our neighbors come to our house, do we tell them to go away? No, oh, that's rude little pig. I had just grabbed the doorknob when I felt another sneeze coming on. Well, I huffed and I snuffed and I tried to cover my mouth, but I sneezed a great sneeze. I took. Uh-oh, what do you think happened? And you're not going to believe it, but this guy's house fell down too, just like his brother's. When the dust cleared, there was a second little pig. Mm -hmm. There he is. Now, you know food will spoil if you just leave it out in the open. So I did the only thing there was to do. I had dinner, again. Think of it as a second helping. Well, he really does make, 
He really does make a good point, right? Our moms and dads always tell us not to leave food out, not to leave the milk on the counter because it'll spoil. So again, he is just doing what he's told. I was getting awfully full, but my cold was feeling a little better. And I still didn't have that cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. So I went to the next house. This guy was the first and second little pig's brother. And he must have been the brains of the family because he had built his house out of bricks. Oh, there's the brick house. That looks good and solid, doesn't it? It's not gonna blow over in the wind or from a wolf sneeze, is it? So I knocked on the door of the brick house. No answer. I called, hey pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? And you know what that rude little pig answered? Get out of here, wolf. Don't bother me again. Can you believe how rude they are? I'm so glad I don't live in this neighborhood with those rude neighbors. Talk about impolite. He probably had a whole sack full of sugar and I wouldn't even give me one little cup for my dear old sweet granny's birthday cake. What a pig. I was just about to go home and maybe make a nice birthday card instead of a cake when I felt my cold coming on. Well, I huffed and I snuffed and I sneezed once again. Achoo! And then the third little pig yelled, I don't come around here again. Oh my goodness. Wow, they are being so rude to that poor wolf. All he wants is a cup of sugar. Now, I'm usually a pretty calm fellow, but when somebody talks to me like that and yells at me, I go a little crazy. So when the cops drove up, of course I was trying to break down the pig's door. And the whole time I was huffing and puffing and sneezing and making a real scene. They didn't know I had a cold. That little piggy didn't even bother to ask me. Oh, that's a good point. He has a cold, right? Of course he's going to huff and puff. And they're being rude to him. So of course he's going to yell. So what do you think happens? Let's find out. The rest, as they say, is history. Uh-oh. The news reporters found out about what I'd done. They figured a sick guy going to borrow a cup of sugar didn't sound very exciting. They jazzed up the story with all that huff and puff and blow your house down, and they made me the big bad wolf. That's it. That's the real story. I was framed. Well, friends, after hearing his side of the story, what do you think? Do you believe him or do you believe, still believe the three little pigs? It was just for a cup of sugar, right? That's all he wanted. Oh, by the way, I didn't never got that cup of sugar. Maybe you could loan me a cup. Oh, uh-oh. Would you loan him a cup? I don't think I would. That's it. I hope you enjoyed that book. And, and I hope, I hope maybe, maybe some of you at least believe the big bad wolf now. And uh, I hope you're having fun. There's more fun on its way. I think now we're, we're turning it over to, to Lotus Yoga for some little Lotus Yoga for some yoga. Thanks, Tara. That was awesome. I had never heard the big bad wolf side before. Everyone leave a reaction if you enjoyed that story. And next up we have Little Lotus Yoga. And this is our second year doing, having them at our family literacy carnival. And we're super excited that they can join us today. Hello everyone. Hi, thank you for joining us. I'm really excited to be invited back. Thank you for having us, uh, Little Lotus. I'm Cynthia and I am the owner and yogi here at Little Lotus. Um, I thought today, um, as the uh, carnival theme was around the world, I thought I would bring us back to Canada. Lots of people like to travel to Canada. One of our favorite books here at Little Lotus is Sometimes I Feel Like a Fox. Um, I, we love this story, um, especially because we are on Treaty 6 territory land, and this is a great book to celebrate Indigenous and Métis culture. 
So today, what we will do is read the story together. Then we will do some yoga poses and then we'll get a chance to maybe slow our bodies down just a smidge and um, then say goodbye. So I thought today, again, we would read our story. Sometimes I feel like a fox by Danielle Daniel. So I'm going to get in a little closer because the artwork is amazing in this book. We love it. So it says, sometimes I feel like a bear, strong and confident. I stand tall and growl and protect those around me. Sometimes I feel like a deer, sensitive and kind. I listen to the sounds in the distance and prance through the forest. Sometimes I feel like a beaver, busy and purposeful. I only use what I need and I always get the job done. Sometimes I feel like a butterfly, delicate and free. I spread my wings wide open and flutter from flower to leaf. I love those beautiful wings. Sometimes I feel like a moose, awkward yet graceful. I move swiftly and silently with a gentle strength and wisdom. Sometimes I feel like an owl, intuitive and discreet. I fly across the dark night sky, always watching and listening. Sometimes I feel like a rabbit, quick and alert. I like to eat my carrots and leap into new adventures. Sometimes I feel like a turtle, slow and quiet. I retreat into my shell and find peace and solitude. Sometimes I feel like a wolf, intelligent and loyal. I surround myself with family and howl into the moonlight. Sometimes I feel like a porcupine, innocent and curious. I have a big imagination and I know how to protect myself. Sometimes I feel like a raven, dark and mysterious. I am both messenger and secret keeper and I help bring light from darkness. Sometimes I feel like a fox, sly and sharp. I observe all those around me and disappear quickly. And at the end of the book, we love that the Métis author, Danielle Daniel, wrote about the totem animals. So all of these animals in this book are totem animals and their meaning. So the bear meant brave, the deer loving, beaver determined, butterfly vulnerable, moose strong, owl wise, rabbit creative, turtle patient, wolf loyal, porcupine curious, raven truthful, and fox clever. So we are going to take these totem animals and their meanings. And in our yoga poses that we're about to do, we're going to use them in affirmations. Now, affirmation is a big word, but it also means words that help us to feel good about ourselves. Just like the words were a pretty amazing words to help us feel good about ourselves. So I'm gonna hop back there to my mat and let's get some movement going. Here we go, I'm gonna scooch back. So our 
first animal in our book, if you remember, was sometimes I feel like a bear. So we're going to get ready to do our bear pose. So we're going to stand up and maybe make your feet a little wide and we're gonna do a bear breath. So we're gonna practice this one first. So we're gonna breathe our hands up and then we're gonna come down and be growl like a bear, like raw. Ooh, that was great. Should we try that again? We're gonna breathe up and roar like a bear. Ooh, or growl like a bear. Rawr. This time, instead of growling, we're going to use the affirmation of I am brave. So let's try that. We're gonna breathe our hands up in our bear. And we're gonna come down and say, I am brave. I am brave. Well done. That was great. Let's see what our next totem animal is. Our next totem animal is the deer. So our deer pose is one that is soft. So we're gonna sit back down and our deer pose is, we're gonna put one leg to the side your foot is on your knee and maybe tuck that one in behind a little bit. Oh, and I love in the story that the totem animal um, deer or the affirmation or the words means I am loving. So we're going to sit in this pose and we're going to stretch our arms out. And we're going to give ourselves a big hug and say, I am loving. Oh, give yourself a big hug. Oh, and a big squeeze. That feels good on a Sunday. So we're gonna get tricky because what we do on one side of yoga with our body, we have to do on the other. So we're gonna switch our body and our legs to the other side. Do you remember which elbow you had on top? We're also going to in our hug, put that elbow, other elbow on top. So we're gonna open our arms up wide. We're going to say, I am loving. Oh, give yourself a big hug. Well done. Our next totem animal in our story is a beaver. Now, I know that beavers have great big tails. So we're going to move to our hands and knees. I'll come to the side a little bit. So in our beaver pose, we're going to, a good balance one, we're going to be on our hands and knees. And if you're feeling ready, maybe stretch one hand out and then the opposite foot. And we're gonna pretend our foot is our beaver tail and we're gonna slap them down hard. Ooh, that was great. Let's try that again. Reach up and slap it down hard. Great. This time we're going to do it on the other side and we are going to be determined. Determined is a big word meaning we can do it. I can do it. I know I can. So we're going to do the other side this time. So get your foot out, your big beaver tail, and maybe you balance on your other arm up. If it's too tricky, you might just be on your hands and knees and we're gonna slap our tail down and say, I am determined. Ooh, let's try that again. We're gonna put that one up and say, I am determined. Well done, beavers. Let's see if we can figure out what our next totem animal is. Butterfly. I love her big wings and she has a butterfly in her hair. So butterfly pose in yoga is where we take the bottom of our feet, and we just pop them together. And our legs here become like a butterfly wing. So maybe we'll flap them a little bit. And butterflies symbolize for the totem animals. I love this one. It is vulnerable. And that's another big word. 
And vulnerable means maybe you open your heart to others. So we're gonna flap and say, I am vulnerable. So we're gonna flap, take a breath and say, I am vulnerable. I am. <sighs> Our next totem animal from our story is the moose. This is another animal that we're going to stand up with. So we're gonna stand up. Oh, and I know moose have big legs, big and tall. So we're gonna stand up and we're gonna get our big antlers. Moose are very strong. So we're going to do a forward fold or bend. So we're gonna take our big antlers and a breath in. And we're gonna breathe out and fold down. And breathe up. Oh, that was great. This time we're going to breathe down and say, I am strong. That's a great affirmation. So we're gonna take our antlers again. Maybe you open your shoulders up wide. And we're gonna breathe down and say, I am strong. And breathe up and maybe we say, I am strong breathing up. I am strong. Well done, strong moose. You are so strong. Our next animal is the owl. I love that owls are wise. So we're going to sit and do our owl pose. And I like to do this one. If you have your grown up, maybe you're grown up and you are back to back. This is kind of fun to be back to back in this seated owl twist. So we're just gonna sit in crisscross applesauce, hands on our knees. We're gonna be breathe. First, we actually need to make our eyes big and wide like an owl. <laughs> and then we're gonna breathe our hands up. And we're gonna twist to the side like this. And then we say, ho, 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 ho. And we're gonna breathe up. And we're going to twist to the other side and hoot. Hoo, 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 hoo. This time we're going to twist to the other side, but we're going to say, I am wise. Are we ready? We can breathe our hands up. And we're going to twist to the side and say, I am wise. Well done. We're going to do it to the other side. So we're going to breathe our hands up and we're going to twist to the other side and say, I am wise. Well done, owls. Our next animal is a bunny. And I loved how the author told us in the Métis and Indigenous culture, the bunny represents, the totem animal represents creativity. So we are going to do a bunny breath. And a bunny breath is a quite great way to energize your body. So maybe if you're feeling tired, you can always do this bunny breath. It kind of gives us a little bit of energy. So we have to find our cute little bunny noses. And we're going to take three quick breaths to our nose. Maybe we put up our bunny ears. And we're going to breathe quickly, three breaths in and one breath out. So in our bunny breath with our cute bunny noses going. That's bunny breath. And it's a great way to get energized, but I also think it's a great way when we're energized to be creative 
So to get our creative juices flowing. So we're gonna do our bunny breath one more time and we will say, I am creative. So we're gonna get our bunny ears out. We will just breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and say, I am creative. I love that affirmation, my friends. Our next animal is our turtle. I'll bring it a little closer because there's a bit of a glare. There is our turtle. So we are going to do turtle pose. So it's one that we get to sit again and it's tricky. So we're gonna open our legs kind of wide and sitting up and we're gonna take one hand and slide it under. And I have my little hand under my legs and we're gonna take our other hand and slide it under. And here we are in turtle pose. <sighs> Maybe you lean forward like you're in your little turtle shell. And I love the affirmation for this is patient. So let's take a deep breath in and say, I am patient. Can you wave your little turtle flippers? Maybe your turtle feet. Well done. Our next animal is a wolf. I'll bring that closer so you can see. There is our wolf. And I know a couple of days ago, we had a big full moon here in Edmonton. It was so bright. And if I was a wolf, I'd probably be howling at that moon. So we are going to go into downward dog pose and we are gonna howl like wolves. So to get to downward dog, you can be on your hands and knees and then we're just gonna push up in and maybe take a big howl here of really good. I can see why wolves do that. So let's try one more. Take a breath in and howl it out. Howl. This time our wolf affirmation is I am loyal. And loyal is another big word. Loyal can mean you are kind and good to friends. You listen, you take care of your friends. That's kind of what loyal means. So we're going to go back up into our downward dog pose and we're gonna use our affirmation of I am loyal. So we're gonna push back up into our downward dog and we're gonna take a breath in and say, I am loyal. That felt great. And we're gonna come back to our hands and knees. Our next is our porcupine. Yeah, and I like this one. I'm gonna have to check in the back because I can't remember what. Uh, the porcupine is curious. Porcupines are very curious animals. So to get in our porcupine, I think we're going to lay on our backs and we're gonna get our quills, which will be our fingers and toes and spike them up into the air. So we're gonna lay on our backs and, oh, well done. And legs up and spread your toes and spread your fingers and get your, Quills, and we're gonna say, I am curious. Maybe touch and come down. Oh, that was great. Let's get our quills again. Oh, spread those toes as wide as you can and your fingers as wide as you can and maybe touch them and say, I am curious. Well done. I have a sneeze. Excuse me. 
Sorry about that, my friends. Oh, our next animal is our raven. <laughs> Excuse me, I apologize. And ravens are big birds. They're like crows, but they have magnificent wingspans. And I love in the story how the raven is truthful or stands for truthful. So we're gonna stand up. And this is a great balance pose. So maybe we shake it out because we've been sitting for a while. Shake it out. Well done. We are going to balance on one foot and we're going to spread our raven wings. And maybe we balance up on one foot. If you are feeling confident, maybe you tip back and you get your raven wings. And you can say, I am truthful. Well done. And what we said before, what in yoga, what we do on one side, we have to do on the other. And sometimes I find this leg is my wobbly leg. I get a little wobblier on this one, but I'm going to try. Like the beaver, I'm determined. So we're going to get our big raven wings out. Oh, well done. And we're going to tip back if you can. And we are going to flap our raven wings and say, I am truthful. Great job, everybody. And our very last animal is our fox. And I love that the fox is clever. So we are going to get on our hands and knees just like this. And we are going to say, I am clever. Are you ready? Take a breath in. I am clever. Yes, you are. Well, everyone, thank you. I'm going to scooch a little closer. Thank you for joining me, Teacher Cynthia, or Cynthia, here at Little Lotus Inc. Um, again, I love this book. I think it's a great story to celebrate our Indigenous and Métis culture here in Edmonton. Um, thank you. I have a goodbye song that I love to sing. Our goodbye song has a very special word in it called Namaste. And Namaste means the love and light in my heart sees the love and light in your heart. So I always get my good goodbye waves and my song goes Goodbye, my friends. Goodbye, my friends. It's time to say goodbye, my friends. Namaste. Namaste. It's time to say goodbye, my friends. Thank you for joining me. Thank you um, for the family carnival for having us back again. We love being part of this. Um, we do have a preschool program here at Little Lotus Inc. Um, and we also are offering some online uh, preschool literacy yoga movement classes here starting February 9th. So hopefully you'll join us. Thank you, thanks again. Thank you, Cynthia. That was awesome. Everyone remember to leave a reaction below if you enjoyed the session. Um, so next up, we will have an oral storytelling um, from Marilyn Lazie from the Na Métis Nation of Alberta. So Marilyn Lazie was born in Lloydminster, Saskatchewan. Being a true Métis, Marilyn moved around fre fre frequently with her family and finally planted roots on the Elizabeth Métis settlement. After raising her family and enduring many trials and tribulations, she emerged as a strong and opinionated Métis woman 
who discovered early in life that her passion is helping those who could not help themselves and to be a voice for the voiceless and advocates for the rights of Métis people. Having grown up in a Métis community, Marilyn truly understands what it means to be working with and for the Métis Nation of Alberta. Marilyn has been working with, for the, with the Métis Nation of Alberta since 1996 and is the treasurer of the Métis Local 1990 in Grand Prairie. As a stalwart advocate for Métis women, Marilyn is the president of the Alberta New Down, Treasure, New Down Committees on behalf of the Métis Nation of Alberta and is always looking for opportunities to give back to the community. Marilyn's background in consulting for the First Nations and Inuit Health Branch, as well as the Métis Nation of Alberta, she has developed unique cultural training programs for the general public, as well as industry on the story of the Métis. Marilyn has also developed a Métis Elders Abuse Training Program for both elders and seniors, as well as their caregivers, which she has implemented rights across the province, both in Métis and First Nations communities. Unfortunately, Marilyn is unable to be with us today, but she has kindly prepared a video and she will have her storytelling playing over the PowerPoint. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Marilyn Lazé, and I'm the chairman of the Cultural Committee of the Métis Nation of Alberta. I also work directly for President Audrey Patra, who unfortunately could not be with us here today to tell the story of Bannock. So that's what I'm going to do for you today is tell you the story of Bannock. But before we get started, I would like to thank Joshua for inviting me to participate in today's Family Literacy Day 2021. Let's travel the world together. And that's and up. one of the reasons why I picked the story of Bannock, because the Bannock has been on the other side of the world, and it came over to Canada on a boat from Scotland, and that's where it got its name, it was in, Scot in Scotland, and when they brought it over to Canada, the Indigenous peoples of the land, who were First Nations and Métis, they quickly gathered up the recipes and created their own version and they adapted the Scottish recipe into making what their version of Bannock is. Now there's a lot of different versions of Bannock as you can see from these recipes that have been passed down from generation to generation on how to make Bannock. If you look at this one over here, it's Gary's Grandma's Bannock. And I tried making that one and it's really, really delicious. So I can't think of a better way to connect families together than by sharing recipes. Do you have a recipe that has been passed down from your grandma and your great, great grandma that your mom and dad make for you today? And it's absolutely delicious. So that's what we're going to talk about today is the absolutely delicious Bannock. So Bannock, like I said, is a traditional cuisine of Indigenous people of Canada. And if you look over, there's many different ways you can make Bannock and there's like the many different recipes. There's oven baked Bannock, mmm, looks delicious. And there's also Bannock on a stick, which made it very, very versatile back in the, in the days of the fur trade because you could make a fire, you could whip up your recipe and there you could cook it over the fire on a stick. There's also fried bannock, but it also goes by many other different names depending on what part of Canada you come from. It could be fry bread, it could be fried bannock, or it could be like they call it in the east, elephant ears. This is my friend Owen. And Owen has his favorite Bannock recipe, as you can see here, and he's going to teach us on how to make Bannock. So if you just want to sit back and relax for the next few minutes, and Owen's going to show us how to make Bannock. Hi, my, my name, name is Owen Collins, Collins, and I'm and from, from Elizabeth Métis Settlement. 
new Naomi is set from the youth camp. I cook at Nike Crossing, and today I am going to show you how I make bannock. Before you try making bannock at home, please ask your mom and dad before you try, as you will be using our equipment and the oven. Bannock is a staple in many Métis households across a Métis homeland. There are many ways that the Métis family make bannock, but the recipe only uses a few simple ingredients and a lot of love. Fresh baked bannock was usually served with butter and wild Saskatoon and rice. Sorry, we're having some technical issues here. I'm going to play the other video she sent me because that one's not playing properly. The youth camp. I cook at Makey Crossing and today I am going to show you how I make bannock. Before you try making bannock at home, please ask your mom and dad before you try as you will be using hot equipment and the oven. Bannock is a staple in many Makey households across a Makey homeland. There are many ways that Makey family make bannock. But the recipe only uses a few simple ingredients and a lot of love. Fresh baked bannock was usually served with butter and wild Saskatoon and raspberry jam. Everyone is uh, somebody in my, their family or my community that can make good bannock. Some are good at making baked bannock and some are good at making fried bannock. The recipe I'll be using today is late Edward Taylor's bannock recipe. He was a both a great baked and fried bannock maker. Now, let's get started on the bannock, shall we? Before I get started, I'm going to put Auntie's apron on because making bannock can be very messy. First, I'm going to add all the dry ingredients, which is just the flour, baking powder, and the salt. Then I'm going to mix all the ingredients together because it's uh, so it'll bake properly. Oops. And then I'm going to create a, a crater in the middle so I can put all, add all my wet ingredients. So before I add all my wet ingredients in, I'm going to crack an egg into the crater and I got to break it up. Next, I'm going to add the water and the oil into the, into the middle. I'm not going to add all the water into it because it can, it can uh, get a little stickier. And then I will slowly and indigenously mix all the ingredients together. If mixed fast, the mixture can, may have flour pockets. And if you don't mix it thoroughly, the bannock won't bake properly. So if it doesn't look as doughy as you want it, you can add more water. And that should be enough there. Now that I'm done mixing the dough, I will dust the cutting board with tons of flour. And then I'll, I'll thoroughly knead it at least 10 times. Make sure both sides get uh, enough flour just so it doesn't, uh, doesn't stick. I will flatten and dull with my knuckles as it will bake evenly in the oven. I will now uh, place the dough onto the baking sheet, which I have here. I'll add a whole, I'll add a poke of uh, the holes Onto the bat on top of the batik, just so it'll add air and it'll bake evenly. I'll also add a egg wash on top just so there would be a nice browning on top. I will now top off the bannock with some smoked salt. I'm 
now that the bannock's done uh, mixing, I will toss her in the oven and leave it in the oven for at least 30 minutes. Now that the bannock is done baking, I will spread some lard over on both sides of the bannock. Like this. Make sure you don't get, just so it looks real nice and shiny. You don't see any flour on the top. So now I'm going to stand the bannock up so it can cool off. The bannock is now finished. You can either cut it into pieces or break it apart with your hands. Thank you, Owen. Didn't that look like it was easy enough to do? Can you spot any of the ingredients on this slide that Owen used to make his bannock? Um, did he put in bacon? Mm, no, I don't think so. But I know he did put an egg in there because once he made the crater, then he put the egg in and he had to sush it around. Now, did he put in flour? Yes, he did. That was the first thing he put in was the flour. And sugar? Well, it depends on where you get your recipe from, but sometimes people put sugar in their, in their bannock recipes for both fry bed and baked bannock. Um, so did he put in jam? Mm, no, I seen him mixing jam at the beginning, but I'm pretty sure that the jam is what goes on it after it's all cooled. Now, Owen stood the bannock up so that it would cool, but I remember when I was little and my grandma would make the bannock and it would take it out of the oven and it smelled so good. And you put the butter on there and the butter would just melt. And then you would put your jam, homemade raspberry jam on top. And oh, it was so delicious. So you can both eat it when it's hot and when it's cold. So hopefully you picked out all of the, the ingredients that are in this picture that help to make bannock. Now, bannock is a must have with any deer or moose or beef stew or any kind of soup really. Um, it was the main staple in our, our house when I was growing up as a little girl. And today it's one of my favorites. So if your mom and dad was able to make you bannock, what would you put on it? And what would you like to eat with it? Would you just eat it by, by itself or to taste it, dipping, dipping it into some yummy stew is always, always a good way to eat it too. Now, um, I would like to challenge you all to go out and find books, recipes, or even songs about bannock. Because if you go out and search with your parents' permission, you can find a song called Frozen Bannock Sandwiches. And it's the song about a little boy who has to live with his grandma or his cookum, and his cookum makes him sandwiches and puts it in the freezer so they'll be nice and fresh for when he goes to school. And so that, that's what the song is about, is about his frozen bannock sandwiches that his cookum made for him. So you should go out and see if you'd be able to find it. So here are some of the books that uh, we have here at um, our education department, which is Rupert's Land Institute. And if you wanted to go onto their website, you could probably find some really good books about bannock. So there was a wuss, and the world famous bannock, Oasis, sorry. Oasis means children or child in Cree. And Granny's giant bannock. Ooh, that one looks interesting. I bet you Granny makes the biggest bannock in the whole world. That looks like it would be a really good book to read about bannock. And then we have our very own Métis cookbook. 
that the Métis Nation of Alberta put together a few years ago, and it has a lot of good traditional food. So if you wanted to try Bannock at home to get your mom and dad to make it for you, then you could use this cookbook. And in there, if you see the picture on the front there, that looks like some really good, delicious stew. And then there's the Bannock book by Alinda Ducharme. And so these are all very, very, very good resources that you can use to go out and discover more about Bannock. So enjoying food together helps to build community. So where do you eat food with others? Um, do you sit around the table um, and you ask each other about how each other's day was or um, and who do you like to eat food with? I like eating food with, with my grandbabies and making them bannock and sitting around the table and having them tell me stories about their day. But who do you like to eat your food with? And where do you like to eat food with others? I know restaurants are a very good place to eat food. And if you live in Edmonton, there is a place where you can go to buy bannock and eat bannock burgers. You can eat bannock and stew, and they're called Native Delights. That's the name of the restaurant. So maybe you can try and Google that too to find out where you can get Native Delights. But I would like to encourage you all to get the ingredients. There's not that many. Remember, there's flour, baking powder, salt, and if you want it, sweet sugar, an egg, and some water and a little bit of oil and you mix it all together and you get in there and you get there with your hands and you get your hands all sticky and make yourself some bannock and you will and then it tastes better when you make it by yourself. Um, when I was a little girl playing at home um, my mom taught us how to make glue with something like a bannock dough. We didn't eat it though but we used it to um, glue our stuff together. So there's a lots of versatile things and ways that you can learn from food and transform it into something else. But I would encourage you all to enjoy a piece of Bannock. Thank you and enjoy the rest of, of Thank you, Marilyn, for preparing that for us. Um, you'll now notice that if you open the chat, a few links were sent. One of the links is for our, for our feedback survey, and we would really appreciate if you would take some time to fill that out. There'll also be an email going out after that you can use to get to the survey. And one of our Center for Family Literacy facilitators also put in the link to um, the Native Delights website. So if you're interested in trying some Métis food, you can click that link. Perfect. And to finish off the day, we're going to announce the draw winners for the books donated by the Center for Family Literacy. So congratulations to Mickey Friedrich. You're the lucky winner of a selection of children's books donated by the Center for Family Literacy. Um, the Center will be in contact with you after the event to confirm any details. And thank you all for joining us today. We hope you keep singing, reading, and having fun together. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you, Shay, and thank you, everybody. Um, we hope you had a great time. And like we do in our programs, we're going to stop the meeting by counting us out. So five, four, three, two, one. Bye, everybody.